Gana Timenda Tunandasia Gana Gana Salakaya Taxu so militaje netas my shigura be namaha Sicheta mano vistan stapeta in a boat aile Sairupa Kadama yandadati swampadantikan Vandeha siguru sutam padakamala siguru vashnavam scha Sirupa and Sagiatan Sagana Ragunatan Tavitan Sajivan Sadwetan Savadwetan Parijana Saitan Si Krishna Chetan Devan Sirada Krishna Padasahagana Lalita Sivi Shakavitan Sha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandu Jagapati Gopesa Gopika Kantu Rada Kantan Mastati Tata Kanchena Gorange Rada Burindamani Swari we shall be no so to Devi, Panamami, Ari, Pia, Kishnaya, Vasudeva, Deva, Kina, Dana, Yacha, Nanda, Gopa, Kumara, Ya, Govinda, Ya, Namo, 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 Mahavadan, Ya, Ya, Krishna, Prima, Pada, Ya, Te, Krishna, Ya, Krishna, Chaitanya, Namini, Guru, Te, Se, Namo, Se, Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nitya, Ananda, Se, Riyad, Veja, Gadahara, Se, Vashadi, Guru, Bhakta, Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ananda Lila Maya Vigrayo, Ima Bada Vicha Vishindarayo, Tasma Pramanasa Padayo, Chita Chandra Yunamana Mastate, Chita Chandra Yunamana Mastate. So I thank everyone for coming to the, our, Delhi Bhagavad Gita class at here is Kan Krishna Balaram Mandi Vrindavan. So the those who are watching from uh, is Kan Vrindavan TV. So here the, the talks about from uh, the talks by Lord Krishna, which is uh, he, here is such talk is the actually is actually the profession of life, because by such hearing. We, we can't terminate our existence from you know, this material world. So uh, we are in chapter nine. This chapter nine is dealing with confidential knowledge. It's called uh, Rajaguya Yoga. It means the yoga of uh, confidential knowledge, Guya. Yeah. Uh, the, there are many, there are different different knowledges in the knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita. There's ordinary knowledge. There is uh, confidential knowledge. There's more confidential. There's the most confidential, and then there is the the best of our confidential. This is all revealed within here. This in this within these chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. Especially, we're going to be hearing the most confidential knowledge of between uh, is this chapter 9 is about what is the, the, the gist, what is this knowledge and as the beginning of the Gita Lord Krishna is saying that this knowledge I'm giving you because you are my devotee and because you are not envious of me so therefore I am giving you in this knowledge so which means this knowledge it's had to be the most confidential because it's not meant for everyone. It's not meant for everyone because not everyone is able to understand the knowledge of God. Just like, for example, when Lord Krishna, when he was on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, not everyone was able to understand him that he's God. Not only a few people, I think we have mentioned this in the previous lecture also, but only very few people know that, oh, this is Bhagavan, this is God. So there are millions, millions of uh, soldiers who were assembled on both sides of the Battle of Kurukshetra. But just um, only a few people, less than 10, know that this is God, this is the Supreme Lord. Otherwise, if everyone knows that this is God, there will be no fighting. And of course, the whole battlefield of Kurukshetra is to establish the, the religious principle. 
because it was said to be the damage youth, the religious war. It's not just an ordinary war. It's to establish the the principles of religion, to establish that yes, uh, where there's religion, there's victory, there's perfection, there's happiness, everything. Yata yoga shoro krishna yata patu danodara. This is the last verse of the Bhagavad Gita. So in the beginning of this uh, verse, Lord Krishna is telling Arjun that he don't take your time on, that I am giving you this knowledge. Why? Guya Tama, this most confidential knowledge. You know? Why Pravaksha has me? I'm a suja of it because you are never envious of me. You know? You know, because in this material world, everyone is envious of God. How are we envious of God? Because we are thinking that we can be God. We are thinking, we think ourselves to be the controller. That is the mentality of everyone in this material world. That, that yes, I am the controller. And if I'm not controlled now, I may not be able to control now because of my limitations. But ultimately, my ultimate desire is to be the controller, is to, is to have dominion over everything I can see. That is my ultimate uh, desire. We all want to control everything. That is desire, desire of everyone in this material. And that's why they say this war is uh, uh, that is the so survivor, survivor of the fittest, is uh, survivor of the fittest, hmm? understanding, sahastanam, apadani, chatuspadam, uh, uh, what's that? Titan, what is that? Uh, okay, Jivu Jivu Shia Jivana is the last, last, la this last line in a Bhagavatam verse which was uh, mentioned by uh, uh, Vidura. Is it Vidura, not that money. That this material world, uh, we find that those entities who have no leg. They are the, uh, they are the, the means of sustenance for those who have leg. And then, those, the, those who have tiny legs, they become the sustenance. They, sustain, they become the means of sustenance for those who have many legs. And then the weak are always at the mercy of the strong. That you know, you know, those who are strong, they always dominate the weak. And then, so the, princ the principle of this material world is that uh, one living entity is food for another living entity. So that is the, the nature of, this, of the material world we are in. So therefore, we always tend to be victorious. We always, you know, searching for victory. But is it, is it, is it, is that's the nature of the material world because the material world is such a place where uh, everyone is under illusion. Everyone is under illusion that they can be the, uh, they, they can be the victorious, they can be the, they can be dominant over, of, over the rest. Even though sometimes, according to the, how the, the course of time, or even though sometimes one may be victorious for some time, one may dominate for some time, but in the, after some time also, because the time factor controls everything, then again, against, Another person comes. Another person comes. So that is the nature of material. Especially nowadays, whereby you have so many political leaders, you know, a lot of political leaders have the idea, they fight for elections, they win the elections, and then they think now they have become the controller now. They become the most powerful now in the in the, in the, in the particular land. Why they are trying to maintain their dominance, their so-called control over people. Another person, they're already making a plan to you know, upstate this fellow. They're already making a plan. And then the next election comes, whoever can tell the most lie, again win the election. So the, the one who has become the controller now, and now he becomes defeated, another person comes in. And this is good, this has been going on since, since the beginning of time, because that's the nature of the material world. But in the spiritual world, it's not like that. Spiritual world, there is only one recognized controller. There is only one leader. And that leader is the Supreme Lord. 
is the supreme the supreme law he is the, he is the supreme controller of all the entities and in the spiritual world everyone so everyone accepts there is no question in the air there is no doubt there in the, in the spiritual there is no doubt and everyone lovingly accepts and of course in the spiritual world even though the lord is the supreme controller is the, is the supreme master over everyone but at the same time he is a very very loving master because he reciprocates with everyone he reciprocates he reciprocates with all, with all living. So to such an extent, sometimes it may be difficult to even find the difference between the master and the servant. Because the law, even though it's the master, but he, but he reciprocates with his, with his servant. That sometimes, you know, sometimes the master becomes like uh, a plaything uh, in the hands of the servant. Which is something we cannot even conceive of in this material world. We can't conceive of that. Just like when Lord, when Lord Krishna was here in Vrindavan, you know, 5,000 years ago. They, yeah, he's the Supreme Lord, but he came in Vrindavan as, his, as, as the beloved of his devotees. And, and, and the love is such so that his devotees, they simply... They will treat Krishna just like their pet object, a loving pet object. Sometimes, like just like I used to, I used to say that sometimes the the gopis of Vrindavan they tell Krishna that oh, if you if you dance for us, we're going to clap our hand. If you dance for us, we're going to give you ladu. So you know, Krishna will sing, he will dance, and this gives gives so much fun to the to the gopis, elderly gopis. And then they will give Krishna ladu. They will give okay because you have done you have done so well. Here's the you know ladu for you because you have done so well. So this kind of uh, understanding is not is inconceivable for those who are who are not devotees. It's inconceivable. So therefore, Lord Krishna is telling Arjun at the beginning of this chapter nine that yes, because you are never envious of me. So therefore, I want to give you this most confidential knowledge this guya tamam the most confidential knowledge guya means confidential and becomes something deeper because the knowledge of god is very very confidential this knowledge is only is only available for it's only possible for one who has become non envious on the chapter 2 also i mentioned that each dwayasa samontena dwayana mohena bharata in the chapter 2 location say that in this material world everyone each dwayas each dwayas dwayas means the uh, dwayas means the desire that every living entity is, over, is overcome in this material world by two things desire and hate the hate is envy, uh, envy. so desire to be the, the controller to be this dominion, and then because one is not unable to have that that fulfillment, so there's there's a, the, the 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 envy is there, you know, the envy is there. So this, so this dress thing that the each each dress, so which means the hate and the desire, but unless those two things are removed from the completely uprooted from the heart. Uh, there is no question of uh, going to the kingdom of God. Those two things must be completely in you know, uprooted from the heart. So therefore, the process of Nam Sankitan is to is to uproot these thi- these two things: desire and hate, envy. So when my Prabhu is then you know giving us the instruction that Nada na na jana na sundarim kavidam chabudi jagadish kamaye mama jamani jamani swari. Babata back to you that my dear Lord, I don't want anything, no money, no wealth, no followers. You know, I do no beautiful poetry. What do I want? I simply want to be your servant, birth after birth after birth after birth. You know, that's I want to be your servant. And then the Lord, of course, for one who really wants to chant the Lord's holy name. So my Prabhu is saying that uh, first, he said, uh, um, Tina Pisunichina, Taruwa Bisarishna. 
Amani na manade na kitani ya sadhari that one should be very humble, one should be tolerant than a tree, be very humble than the blade of grass, one should be respectful, one should offer respect to all living entities, and one should not expect, expect any respect for oneself. If this state of mind, then it's possible to call upon Krishna. Because chanting the Lord's name may actually means to call in upon him. Hey Krishna, hey Govinda. The, the feeling, that feeling, that, with that great calling, calling out to the Lord, so that the Lord himself will take notice of us. That is done when the heart is completely, the liberty is feel total, total helpless, total humility. Then when, when one call upon, upon the Lord's name, then there is a, there is a, <coughs> there is a reciprocation that is there. So the, in the te text number six, which, are, which is our today's text, <coughs> Lord Krishna, he has, he's telling Arjun how everything is uh, under his control, basically. He wants to tell Arjun that yes, because you, can, you see everything in the material world, but everything is actually depending on me only. So te text number six, which is our today's text of the chapter nine of the Bhagavad Gita, the most confidential knowledge. So, Yatakasha Sito Nityam, Vayu Sabati. So maybe you can just chant together. Yatakasha Sito Nityam, Vayu Sabati Go Mahan. Tata Sabani Bhutani Mastani Tupadaraya Yata Just as Akasa Sitha Situated in the sky Nityam Always Vayu The wind Sabatra Gaha blowing everywhere. everywhere. Mahan great. Tata, Tata. similarly. Sabani Bhutani, all created beings. Matstani, situated in me. Iti, thus, Upadaraya, try to understand. Translation on Popo by Zivan Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Popo, Sile Popo Paraki. Understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests always in the sky, all created beings rest in me. Popo. <coughs> For the ordinary person, it is almost inconceivable how the huge material creation is resting in him. But the Lord is giving an example which may help us to understand. The sky may be the biggest manifestation we can conceive. And in that sky, the wind or hair is the biggest manifestation in the cosmic world. The movement of the air influences the movement of everything, but although the wind is great, it is still situated within the sky. The sky is not beyond, no, the wind is not beyond the sky. Similarly, all the wonderful cosmic manifestations are existing by the supreme will of God. And all of them are subordinate to that supreme will. As we gener generally say, not a blade of grass moves without the will of the supreme personality of Godhead. Thus, everything is moving under his, under his will. By his will, everything is being created, everything is being maintained, 
and everything is being annihilated. Still, he is aloof from everything. As the sky is always aloof from the activities of the wind. In the Upanishads, it is stated, Yad Abesha Vata Parvate, it is out of the fear of the Supreme Law that the wind is blowing. Statria Upanishad 281. In the Briad Anrayakub Anrayaka Upanishad 389, it is said, Eta Shea Bidrito Tishtata Eta Shea Akshara Shea Prakashane Gagi Dao Apritivio Viditao Tishtata. By the Supreme Order, under the superintendence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the moon, the sun, and the other great planets are moving. In the Brahma Samhita, also 552, it is stated, this is a description of the movement of the sun. It is said that the sun is considered to be one of the eyes of the Supreme Lord and that it has immense potency to diffuse heat and light. Still, it is moving in its prescribed orbit by the order and the supreme will of Govinda. So, from the Vedic literature, we can find evidence that this material, material manifestation, which appears to us to be very wonderful and great, is under the complete control of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This will be further explained in the later verses of this chapter. So, it's a very beautiful verse. Very beautiful verse by which Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna how everything rest on him. Everything exists only out of his, because of the supreme will of the Lord. Without his desire, without his, his, his particular sanction, nothing can move. There's a very nice uh, uh, beautiful songs <coughs> by Sila Bhaktivin Taku. I just got a song here. Let's see. Okay. So, Sula Bhakti Mitako. He had uh, composed a very nice prayer about the fact that uh, everything moves, that nothing, everything moves only, only according to the will of the Supreme Lord. You know? Just like in this verse, it mentioned that, uh, you know, that the, just as the wind, even though the wind is very, the, the wind is big, the mighty wind blows everywhere, but still, it rests within the within the sky. So similarly, also similarly, also everything that may be seen to be great in this material world, the idea only because of the supreme will of the Lord. That's all the idea. To think otherwise is simply, you know, due to illusion. So the Lord said, "He said, everything rest, just everything rests in the sky." So He said, "All all created beings rest in Me." Hmm? 
So in his uh, beautiful prayer, Sila Bhakti Thakur is said, To me sabi swari swari brajandera kuma To marai chaya bi swe si jamu samha Taba i chama to brahma koruna si jana Taba i chama to bishna koruna palan Taba i chama te shiva koruna simha samhara Taba i chama te maya si jikaraga Taba i chama te jive jana mamara na Samridi unipate duka suka sangatana Miche maya bada jiva asa palevi asa pasefiri Taba i chavi na kichu koriche na pari Tumi tura kakahara palaka pa amara Tumara chara na abina asa na iha Ninja bolo chista prati Osa chariya, tomara icha ya, jeni bara koriya. Bakati bina do ati, bina akinchana. Tomara icha ya, tara jivana marana. So it's mentioned in the, the, this nice prayer that all youthful son of Nanda Maharaj, all youthful son of the King of Braj, you are. You are Lord of all lords. According to your will, creation and destruction take place in the universe. So nothing takes place without the supreme will of Lord Krishna. According to your will, Lord Brahma creates. And according to your will, Lord Vishnu maintains. According to your will, Lord Shiva destroys, and according to your will, Maya constructs the prison house of this world. According to your will, the living beings take birth and die, and according to your will, they meet with prosperity and ruin, happiness and sorrow. The tiny soul, bound up by Maya, vainly struggles in the fetters of bodily desire. Without your sanction, he is unable to do anything. You are my only protector and maintainer. Except for your lotus feet, there is no other hope for me. No longer confident of my own strength and endeavor, I have become solely dependent on your will. Bhaktivino is most poor and his pride has been leveled. Now, in accordance with your will, he lives and dies. So this is the from Sanagati prayer of Bhaktivino Thakur about the the process of surrender to the Supreme Lord. Because after all, wise Lord Krishna is, uh, is giving this knowledge to, to Arjun. It's the Lord is giving this knowledge of how everything uh, rests in him, how everything is basically maintained by him. So the Lord is giving this knowledge so that the living entity can ultimately uh, surrender unto the Supreme Lord because by because after giving up all the false hope that one can be, one can be anything in this material world so after so what what one does is one surrender unto the Supreme Lord and from from that from the time of surrender to the Lord from that time on all anxieties all troubles go away basically there is the Lord, Lord Ramachandra, he has said, I think it's in the, in the Ramayana, that from the time a person say that, my dear Lord, I surrender unto you, so the Lord said that from that time, 
I take care of that person. From the time I say, my Lord, I surrender unto you. So the Lord say, I take care of that person. But we know that we are often not, even though we said, okay, I want to surrender, I want to serve the Lord, we are often not uh, really sincere about it. We are often not sincere about it because we said, okay, we want to serve Krishna, we want to serve God, but within our mind, we want the Lord to serve us. We, long, we want the Lord to actually become our servant. That yes, Krishna, you own everything. You have everything. So therefore, give me everything for my existence. Give me, give me everything for my protection. Give me everything for, for everything. So we actually, our, our ultimate desire is to simply see Krishna as a means of our enjoyment. We want to see Krishna as our servant. Not that we are actually servant of Krishna. And that is basically our, that's basically our mentality. So therefore, Lord Krishna actually says here in the Gita that a person, hmm, for someone to be my devotee, is a very, very rare soul. It's a Mahatma. Some, some Mahatma, Sudulaba, is a very, very rare soul. Hmm? He lost his Sahastra. He said, Sahasri, he said, He said that there are thousands and thousands of, 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 of human beings who are uh, open for perfection, who are searching for perfection. Manusha and Sahasri. He said, out of thousands and thousands, maybe one person may may know the truth. Maybe one, one person may actually become self-realized. One person may not understand that, yes, I am not this, I'm not this material body. I am a spirit soul. Uh, but still, yeah, the Lord said, even among those who have become self-realized, the Lord said, he said, again, even, he said, thousands and thousands among them, even hardly very rare soul, hardly one person come to know me in truth. One person. Hmm? It's a Sad Mahatma Sudulaba. It's such a person. It's very, very rare too. That's why I mentioned that uh, a real Mahatma is the one who has become a devotee of the Lord. That's a real Mahatma. And such Mahatma, the, you, you don't find them. Very, 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 very rare souls. You know, we all, we have come to the, to the temple of God, the Lord to serve. But really, there's no sincerity in our heart. There's no sincerity. We ultimately we want something. We want something. And that's, and that's the reality. And that's why we know that devotees, devotees, see devotees in temple, after a long period of time, still the problem is always there. The, you, join, you, join the, you join the temple, you know, sometimes you're happy, and after some time you're not happy, you know. Because, it, you know, we come, we come to the Lord, and we come with a long list, long list of items that we want. We come with a long, li long list of items that we want, and if you don't get that, we become frustrated. We become frustrated if you don't get that. You know? So therefore, the Lord is telling Arjun that yes, for me, I'm giving you this confidential knowledge because, you know, you don't want. You are my devotee. You, you know, you, it's, you are never envious of me. You are my devotee. You know, just like in the, in the in the chapter four, also the Lord was telling Arjun that uh, he said back to Shime Sakasheti that because you are my devotee, so therefore you are hearing, hearing this knowledge. Otherwise, the knowledge, knowledge of Krishna is a very very confidential knowledge. So this Bhagavad Gita, which we are reading, it's, it's divided in, divided into into three sections: the section on the on the karma, sections on gain, and sections on on, on bhakti. So the all there, and because the topic of bhakti is so confidential, so therefore, these six sections of the Bhagavad Gita which deal with bhakti is within the middle of the Bhagavad Gita. It's, within, it's in, in the middle, it's not easily you know, fine because it's, it's hidden inside the middle of the, of the Gita. Because the most confidential thing, the most confidential knowledge is not easily, easily available. So this is what the Lord is saying, like the song which I sang, 
of uh, Shila Bhakti Vintaku. So now everything depends on the law, everything, creation, maintenance, destruction. It all, it all depends on him. Only uh, everything is going on only according to his will. The living entity cannot even lift a finger without the will of the Lord. Hmm? The living entity cannot li lift a finger without the Lord's will. But we are thinking that yes, we are doing. That yes, I am doing. Uh -huh. This is this is this is this is ahamkara. This is the false ego. We think that yes, I am doing. I am doing. I am doing. But the the, the Upanishads uh, without the you know the wind blows, the winds blow only because of the will of the Lord. That's how how the the wind is blowing. You know, one time there was a, a yaksha. He had gone to the abode of the demigods. And, and this yaksha, uh, normally yaksha is normally being like a very, you know, very powerful beings is, is a yaksha. So yaksha want to prove to the demigod that yes, you demigods, you really have, you really have no power to do anything. So the demigods like 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 uh, in Agni Dev, you know, Vayu Dev, Indra Dev, they all you know, they all laugh. They say, "What this fellow is talking about?" Agni say, "I'm the Agni," you know. Vayu say, "I'm Vayu. I can blow everything," uh, you know. So he actually said, "Okay, let's do a test. Let's do a test." So he said, "Here's the here's a, a strand of." Uh, of a of a grass. Now blow on it. He told the value you blow it. So the value apply all his energy to blow it. He could not even move in it, not even a tiny bit. He tried, try, 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 try. He could not. He could not make the. He could not make the the, the tiny blade of grass to waver. And then the agony comes. He thought that oh I can you know if it's he thought that oh, he can easily burn this thing. And he applied all his energy trying to burn this thing still. He could not do so. He could not do so. That's why applying all his energy, all his thing. So why you came into everyone. So ultimately they realize how how powerful how powerless they, they really are. That unless the Lord desire you for something. You cannot do anything. We cannot do anything. But living this thing under the false ego, thinking, oh, ahankara itinyame, I can I can do this, aham, I can do this, I can do this. Hmm? So the So therefore this knowledge is very, very important. That for one to develop one's relationship with God, this knowledge must be there. That how the Lord is actually is the is actually the basis of everything, the base of our, all of our existence, the, the the basis of our movement. The Lord, He is the He, he is the basis of every of all these things. Hmm? The Lord said, "All living beings they rest in Me." So rest in Him means we are always on the Lord. We always rest. Does the all living entity everyone rest in? There's just no other way. Everyone rest in Him. Hmm? The, that's what the Lord said. That uh, you know, that's what He said. Try to, he said, like Jesus, you try to understand this: how all living entities, you know, are situated, master, ne, you know, master, ne. And of course, in the next verse, the Lord said, uh, you know, the child master, ne. He said that uh, you know, when the Lord was saying that, uh, uh, even though all living entities are in me, but I am not in them, because we should not think that uh, the uh, uh, that because the Mahavadis they think that yeah, oh yes that uh, that is all one that yes all living entities are in Krishna in the, are in God but God and God is also in, in all living entities that's Mahavad that is complete nonsense so the Lord said Nacha Master and he said that no uh, he said that it's, yeah that's actually the, 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 that's actually the previous verse he said that Nacha the Lord said, still, yet everything that is created does not rest in me, 
So you can see, once the Lord says, okay, everything created that is everything resting me, but he said, now everything does not rest in me. So how, the, how can one understand this? It is not, uh, this is what we call tautology in English, that, that what kind of understanding is this? So, therefore the Lord said, Pashime Yoga Ashwaran. Now below my mystic opulence, Pashime Yoga Ashwaran. Hmm? That I am beautiful, the Lord say, I'm everywhere, still, I'm not part of this cosmic creation. You know, why? Because for myself, is the very source of creation. He is the source of it. He creates, and then from his, uh, he created, the, the, the Lord created the, uh, the, the universal elements out of the, the pores of his skin, and then, he lie, and then he lies on the ocean, and then from his stomach, Lord Brahma came out. So Lord Brahma comes out, and then along with that, the host of all the demigods, and then, the, and then you have different, different planetary systems, and all, all created, all become manifested. And then, then, they have, then they have forth, came forth all the living entities, and then they begin their, their process of karma. You know, they have to live out their karma, and all that. So, and after some time, then, then they all go destroy, and everything again wind up, go back into the lost, into the, into the, into the lost body. Because material world is temporary, so everything becomes manifest for some times. And then, after the duration, according to the karma of the living entities, again, everything becomes more manifest, whereby <coughs> all the living entities again go back into the lost, into the lost body. So this, is, this knowledge is all part of the Sambanda. Sambanda means the knowledge of relationship that we have with, you know, with the Supreme Lord. So there are basically, the Vaishnav theology is divided into three. The Vaishnav theology, the Sambanda, Abhidei, and Prayujan. Sambanda is, is uh, the, our relationship with the Lord. Who are we? What is this word? What is the composition? The journey of the living entities, all these things. This is a part of the Sambanda. And what is ultimately the relationship between the living entities and the Lord? It's a, deep, it's a very deep science, of course. And then, after the Sambanda is understood, then one comes to, okay, now one comes to the activity, the activities of devotional service to God. Because now, having understood one's position, one's relationship with the Lord, now, what does one do after this understanding? So this is called Abhidei. Abhidei means the the activity, the service that one does after understanding one's relationship with God. And then, the ultimate goal of that service, when the service is done properly, the bhakti is done properly, so the ultimate goal is, the, this is called prayojan, which means the ultimate goal of life. This is when the living entity develop the, uh, the loving, <coughs> the loving uh, relationship with, uh, with the Supreme Lord. This is called the, the Pyrogen, whereby one can understand one's eternal, eternal position as a particular, as a particular servant in a, in a, uh, in a, of the Lord. So all this, all, this, all this knowledge. So therefore, this knowledge of the Sambanda is very, very necessary. And the chapter, this knowledge begins from chapter 7. So chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, it's all about the... Uh, Sambanda, the knowledge of our, of our relationship with, with the Lord. How everything is, how everything it's all related, everything is all within the body of the laws and the living entities, everything is there. You know, there's so much, especially towards the later part of this chapter. And then, and then of course, the Lord will be explaining, even though the, the, in, this, in this chapter, this middle chapter, uh, 6 to 12, even though mostly dealing with the ones, the knowledge of one's relationship with the Lord, but within it, all, within this also, there is also the hint of the of the devotional service to, to the Lord, of what pleases the Lord. We explain, but what pleases Him, the the the, the knowledge of, of devotional service, we be given hint of that within this chapter uh, uh, chapter uh, nine and ten. 
this we get to have this knowledge. And of course, in chapter 12, the Lord explains the, the symptoms of a devotee, of a, yeah, the symptoms of a, or the characteristic of a devotee. So the Lord explains that in, in chapter 12. So I'm going to stop here. It's very, very nice to always be talking on the Bhagavad Gita. How the Lord is, even though the Lord is uh, teaching Arjun, Arjun is he's a devotee of the Lord. He's the Lord's, he's the Lord's eternal associate. But the Lord is speaking to Arjun, using Arjun uh, as a window to talk to us. Arjun, he does not need, he doesn't need knowledge of the Gita. He's a perfect person. He's always with the Lord, life after life. The Lord said, "Bow me, Mister, in a very time." It's me and you. We have taken so many, many births, but you can. Rem you, I can remember, but you cannot. But still, Arjun is eternal friends of Lord Krishna. So he doesn't need to be told to, to be teach Bhagavad Gita. But the Lord does not speak to living entities. When the Lord comes to this material world, He only deal with His devotees. Whatever the Lord does, only with His devotees. When the Lord was here, only His devotees saw Him. Non-devotees cannot see Him. So, the because the Lord, because of His uh, compassion, of His compassion to the living entities, so He want to teach us knowledge of Himself. So therefore, He spoke through Arjun. Just like we say that you cannot go to God without the Guru. You cannot understand the science of Krishna without the Guru. So therefore the Guru is the trans, Guru is the divine media. You want to understand God, you, you've, got to, you've got to have a, a spiritual master who will uh, instruct you by the science of God. So, because you cannot go to God directly. So therefore Arjun is, the, is, uh, is our transparent divine media to Krishna. So Krishna is speaking to Arjun and then through Arjun we get to hear the Bhagavad Gita. So, and of course, if you follow the full step of Arjun, we follow his full steps by, by not concealing everything within our mind, by not being crooked. We follow his full step, then we can understand Bhagavad Gita just as Arjun understood Bhagavad Gita. You know, because at, at the end of the Gita, the Lord asked Arjun that uh, now I've instructed you, have you understood my instructions? Have you, are you ready to do as I said? The Lord said, uh, it was a nasty Mohan Smriti. He said that, yes, my dear Lord, I've understood everything. Now I'm now ready to do as you're instructed. So we have to pray to be like Arjun. So we have to make effort to understand Bhagavad Gita like Arjun and do as the Lord says. He does Savadama Pratyagya, surrender unto me, become my devotees. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. I'm going to stop here. Is there any. Any question, anything like that? Today we have a very big, big audience today. <laughs> very big audience. So any question or comments, any points? Uh, okay, thank you very much. I guess it's almost time for the Sunday already. Yeah. <coughs> Sila Prabhupada, Sikrishna Bharam, Gopi Manandi, Hare Krishna.